we are joined on the dais by Bella Fontleroy, third double-double of the season with, for her with 19 points and 11 boards, Richmond's Jada Walker with a game-high four steals, and Baylor head coach Nikki Collin. Coach Collin, we'll turn it to you for an opening statement. Ooh, um, game of runs for sure today. Uh, felt really good about the way we started. I think making shots early, um, playing downhill, kind of following the game plan. I thought our defense was really good, um, in particular in the first half when we didn't foul. Um, I thought we did a really good job, um, you know, making their execution tough, taking away passes so they couldn't smoothly get into things. Um, and it's as well as we've shot, I'm nine for 21 from three. If we take away some of those kind of at the end, um, I thought that that created separation, um, especially Bella making open shots, um, Jana making open shots. I thought we did a good job moving the basketball um, and getting to it to the most open player. Um, they played some zone, they played some man, but ultimately we did a really good job on our ball screens, a reading, playing downhill, um, and really started with Jada. And, and I just thought Bella was good all the way around all day. Let's open it up to questions for the student athletes. And we'll go second row, Zach. Zach Smith, Waco Trib. Bella, um, obviously a, a pretty good game, but uh, what was working so well for you tonight? And then, uh, you know, what were your teammates doing to get you or put you in those positions? Um, we have been getting up a lot of shots lately, so I have been very confident in my shot. Um, I have coaches that believe in me, and they tell me to shoot it whenever I'm open. So that definitely worked well for me. Um, from the three-point line and the free throw line. Um, but also, just as a team, we moved the ball. We got to the open space. A, a big key for us was having pace. And we played with pace the whole night. And that's why we got those open looks everywhere on the floor. Chad. Uh, Chad Bothry and KWTX. Uh, Bella, I you know, talked a lot yesterday, too, that this team has like one or two players, or uh, not one or two players. Any player can kind of just go off. And you know, tonight was your night. What? When did you kind of figure that out? And you know, what was it like for you before the game, too? It, for you having a good night before the game um just locked in it's it's tournament time you you went in advance and you know you have to show up in every way you can for your teammates whether it's rebounding making shots defending the best player like everybody tonight had a job and every person on our team did their job jada how much more confident do you feel right now than you did even you know a month ago uh, really confident. Um, it's tournament time. Uh, we've been playing. We've been preparing and practicing. So um, at this time, it's just time to perform, um, time to execute, and whoever does that the most wins. So we did that today, and that's why we won. I guess I was. I should have said individually confident. Like, do you personally feel like you're playing better now than you were not that long ago? Uh, definitely. Um, like yes. she said, we've been in the gym. <laughs> um, we've been shooting. We've been getting shots up. And we've been preparing for every game that we're going to play, so I've been really confident. Uh, I know eight turnovers in the second quarter kind of made that game a little bit closer head into the second half. Uh, what was the conversation like in the locker room before third quarter? Stop turning the ball over. <laughs> um, literally just, we were rushing. Um, what worked so well for us in the first quarter was that we played with pace, but we played to the open person and we slowed down enough to make those reads. Um, the second quarter, we kind of were like, okay, we want to hit home runs. And Coach Nikki always says, hit a single or hit a double first. You don't have to hit a home run every time. So just slowing down and making those open reads, finding those people um, helped us stop turning the ball over so much. I know it's kind of funny at the end, uh, you know, we're heading to the second round now, or instead of the third, I know it kind of putting the name on the bracket kind of had a little funny thing. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, we fixed it, we fixed it, it's okay. Uh, I guess also Jada for you, um, family, friends uh, coming here, what was it like playing for them? Did you get to see them before the game and after? And what was it just like playing in front of them? Um, yeah, I got to see some. Uh, we weren't really allowed to go up to the stand, so I just had to wave from a distance and <laughs> go back to the locker room. But um, hopefully next game I get to see more. Additional questions for the Baylor student athletes. Okay. Thank Bella and Jada, thank you for your time. Good job, you guys. Let's open up to questions for Coach Collin. We'll start with Zach. 
Coach, how has uh, how has Bella gotten better throughout the year, and is she kind of playing her best basketball at this moment? You know, I think um, I think what Bella brings is versatility, and I think um, you know I can think of you know I think it hurt. I mean, she probably missed four open threes and a layup in, in the fourth quarter of the Iowa State game. Um, she was o for everything in senior day. So her, you know, she, she hasn't necessarily just always made shots. When early in the season she was shooting almost 50% from three, um, it was 30%, you know, in our 10 and seven stretch. And so I think her getting back in the gym um, is a really powerful thing. Seeing the ball go through the basket, um, you know, I thought early, um, getting her an early shot uh, against their zone. We did a good job of of playing against their matchup and getting it swung to the open player. And I thought uh, we shot them out of the zone, you know, and I thought the second quarter, our turnovers were a result of they really ramped it up and got into their switching man to man and, and made passes a little tougher and sped us up. And we had some travels and, you know, just we got ourselves caught in tight spaces. And I think the thing about Bella, even from her freshman year to her sophomore year, is she's, she just she understands a little more who she is, um, you know, and, and she just gives us such good position versatility. Like, she's capable of getting 11 rebounds every game. She doesn't always, but that's always the challenge. I think she's got this unique ability to not just shoot the ball, but she can bounce up. Um, you know, like when we, we get those transition layups, we'll, we'll keep working on those with her. Um, but she plays passing lanes. She plays against posts and switches. Um, you know, like she just has a good feel. And we, we're allowed, we, we, it allows us to switch a lot, you know. And, and certainly when we had three um, size at the three, it helped with Oliver's post-ups. It helped with Passat and her size. So when we play small, you, you, feel, you get a little nervous because they, they wanted to search out their thumbs down action and post us up. So... Um, I just think Bella understands that her role is a little bit different every game. If she's making shots, she's probably going to get a lot of shots. Um, if she's not, she's going to be out there because she, she defends and rebounds and, and, and does a good job being a team player, takes charges. Uh, Coach, do you, do you see her becoming like a sharpshooter, three-point shooter, kind of just, you know, for her transition from freshman to sophomore you know, she, you know, double the amount. Yeah, of I, I hope. I hope she's more than that, to be honest with you. Like, I think her frame, um, she can take a hit, she can take a bump. Um, you know, we, we've got work to do on our low post game, you know, really understanding angles and, and using her physicality, understanding how to change speeds off the bounce. You know, I mean, you, you look at it, I'm proud of her. I mean, two assists and one turnover. She doesn't turn it over a lot, but she doesn't get a lot of assists. She tends to be a recipient scorer cuts, offensive rebounds, kick out threes. And so I think she's got, like, her ceiling is so high because of her frame, um, because she's bouncy, because she's strong. Um, like, I think she's just, she's got a lot of room for growth. And she's obviously a really good player right now, but I think her ceiling is, is really, really high. How much of the focus over the last week has been on getting to the rim and kind of going downhill like that? It seems like Jada did that a few times, Dre did yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know. Like. You probably could have, um, there were multiple times I just kept telling Jada, like, we don't need a play. Like, if they're going to switch and they're going to put their five player on you, you just got to go buy her. Um, and, you know, I just felt like it was a key to playing against them. Like, when they're switching, um, like, you've got to get downhill against them. You watch, you watch enough film and you know that that's what you have to do. Like, there are certain things they're really, really good at. And I just thought that was something that we could exploit. If we played downhill, we'd have drop passes. Um, we'd get Jada to her jump shot. We've really focused on her turning down the three a little bit and playing to her jump shot. Because um, to me, when Jada gets to balance and bounce at 15 feet, it's as good a lay as a layup for her. So really getting her to understand her spots on the floor and how she can impact the game. What, what kind of happened in that second quarter with the turnovers? And you know, how, how do you kind of clean that up for the second round? <laughs> The turnovers were like, um, there, there's, not, there's not a good answer for that, other than um, because they were all different. You know, I, I really think because we were shooting the, the ball so well against the zone, they turned up their pressure. Um, and it wasn't full court at that point because we had done a good job breaking the press, the 2-2-1. Um, but they switched to man. And, and they were jumping out in passing lanes and switching things. And, and so it just, it, it, it just amped us up. It's kind of like the, the end of the game where all of a sudden now they're running, they're trapping. I thought 
they just played passing lanes and they they made us put it down and then we'd kick it and you know it was just a little bit of everything I mean I think Bugs had three travels you know in that stretch just picking up her pivot foot not making bad decisions but just making rushed decisions and you know then she's driving in there she's trying to drop it she sped up you know, they get a hand on it. We had a steal that we threw back to them, that they threw back to us, that we threw back to them. You know, so it's kind of, they, they can snowball. Um, and and it, when you looked at the halftime stats, besides Bugs turning it over, every single person had one. Like, it wasn't like anyone was like the, the instigator, the culprit or whatever. It was just outside of Bugs' travels, which quite frankly, we can get our defense set with those. But when you have those live ball ones, they were playing downhill, they were getting to the foul line. So to me, defensively, our defense was really good when we didn't foul. Like our ball screen coverage had to get better. Um, you know, we just, we just had to have our drop coverage be a little bit better. Asia's always been feisty and she's kind of played that role all year. But in a tournament like the NCAA tournament, how important is that to, to you know, this moment? Did you say Asia? Asia, yes. Yeah, yeah she's feisty. That's a good word. Um, you know, I thought, um, I thought she started slow, um, and, and I didn't love her energy to start the third. I thought we knew they were going to go to Washington. She'd been in foul trouble, and, and they, they needed to play to her and through her. Um, but I thought when we took her out and put her right back in, because Dre picked up two quick fouls, then I thought she was great. Like, I really thought she was great. Um, you know, we've talked about that transition where she was playing the three early and, and switching her to playing the post more. Um, when she recognizes, like, hey, I can get into early drags and make a living, when I can get into early step-ups and make a living, um, I just thought, you know, her energy really elevated, um, and she's always going to compete around the rim. I mean, I thought, um, you know, she, she missed some easy ones inside, but, um, you know, she's always going to compete. And this, people don't realize, this is her first NCAA tournament game. So don't tell me, I don't care if you're um, a freshman or a fifth year senior, there's still nerves playing in this kind of game. Has she played against Vanderbilt? Yes. Um, but ultimately, like, I still think it's a different stage. I mean, you're just, you're playing for something different. 